everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce Podcast. We're back. I'm joined by my best friends, Period Flax Hello. and Sips. Hi. What a lovely week we've had. We had a little two days of sunshine followed by torrential rain. Oh, did you guys get a thunderstorm like there? A mini summer. Yeah, I'm soaked, actually. My feet and legs are all wet now. Oh, I'm you have with an umbrella. Today. We had our... But it was so heavy that... We had it yeah. last night, we and had I, our I didn't realise. We had our big one yesterday morning. Mm. What I didn't realise was... Because nice. it's been so hot in the... In the daytime, we keep the... The windows sort of mostly closed up upstairs in the bedroom with the with the blinds down to keep the heat out. And then at night you open the windows and you let the warm air out and the cold air in. So I open, we've got like those Velux, you know, the dormer windows in the uh, in the loft. Oh, so yeah. they sort of, they tilt at like, you know, pretty mad degrees. So I open these windows at about 8.30, crack on, Mrs. F knocks on the door at about 11.30 and says the bed is absolutely soaking. I was like, oh, I was like, no. why? And what had happened was, obviously, I'd left the windows open. I had not heard the rain because I have my headphones on. We're playing Dota and, and I'm playing Blood Bowl and all the rest of it. She said, but I said, it's, it's only my side of the bed, right? She's like, yeah, it's your side of the bed is drenched. I was like, well, oh, don't worry about it. Don't no. worry about it. So I didn't get a very good night's sleep because I was sleeping in a puddle, basically. Um, but it was all right. It, I mean, it dried eventually, but it just it took me a while to get off to sleep because it, it's hard to sleep when you're sleeping on a wet bed. Your brain is well, telling that... you... This bed now is you know how us um, bed pissers feel <laughs> like uh, we got our rubber sheets and everything, yeah. and we we can't help it. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a damn shame. It's a damn but, shame you know. for sure. Yeah, that reminds me of the, like the fire festival. Oh man, that was so, that was one of my favorite documentaries ever. I, think. I watched that again recently because we were on holiday um, in the cabin and we watched it together. Like everyone who went to this little log cabin together, and it was it was everyone was like, no, I guess no no one else had seen it. Oh, and. Uh, it got to the bit where the, the guy was talking about how he had to get involved and uh, save this festival and get down on his knees and suck off the... What? Take one for the team, Trevor. That was the whole bit I didn't where... see it. I, I, I <laughs> didn't realise it was that kind of thing. <laughs> it's such a good documentary. Dude. Uh, it's You've got such to watch a it. crazy story, yeah. Man, oh man. Well, it was just an incredibly overambitious uh, idea. Like, they didn't really realise that, you know, hosting this event on a, on a desert island that, you know, um, they used... What was it? Was it bloody... Um, Fidel Castro or someone? Or, no, was it was it some drug lord? Had, was it had, Pablo um, Escobar's help? island? Or something? It might well have. Yeah, it probably was Pablo Escobar's island. Or and it I was guess at they, one point. It, was it's, it called? What was the name of his place again? It was like uh, La La Casa or like uh, La La something like that. It was it was. Um, yeah, he had like an island had like a zoo on it and everything. Right. It was so like, this this was not that island. I think oh, this right, was okay. something. This was like a remote island that he was using to escape to or hide drugs drugs on or fly fly planes via do you know what i mean right it was some tr transit station it, yeah. for its remoteness rather than its uh kind of i don't know accessibility and as a result i think it was i think it, i i i i'd like the idea of a, of, a, of of people going and but i don't know it's it's a whole a whole like you should see the movie it's just about ineptness by a whole group of people yeah. who who, who obviously have good intentions to start with, but are just too lazy and too... They're just incompetent. Like, I don't know. And I, I, yeah. I feel like the the way that they plan things, like they, they came up with ideas. It was like, you know, you know the way, you imagine if you had a, a company yeah. and everybody, everybody working in the company is a big picture person. Right. And nobody is a detail-oriented person and a realist and a planner and an actual grafter. Right. Everyone is just a sitting doer. around coming up with big I, ideas. I mean, I could, a couple of companies spring to mind immediately. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, so it was, it was, it was like that. Um, so they had all these ideas, and it's also it combined with that whole that very modern influencer thing, where you then you have the actual influencers who are just attractive people that go and take pictures in fancy locations of them doing cool things. And that is such a draw for some people. Even now, I mean, it, you know, people, I mean, even more so now, it's everybody wants to be an influencer. There was that guy, if you saw the story about the guy who quit his job and went to whichever of the Pauls, Logan or Rand or Stephen or whatever the fuck. Oh, the, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he want to become like just uh, anything to do with them? Like, he just said, like I, want his... a, I want a job. I want to work for you. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, Paul X or X Paul, whatever the hell his name is. I, I have no idea. Insert name here. You know the guys, like the ultimate chud. Logan, Logan yeah. Paul. Just Paul a couple Logan. of chuds, big tall chuds. That's them. And he was like, bro, 
just you know what do you get your friends and make some TikToks and get bar get big it's like no no i i quit my job i was making six figures i quit my job to come work for you it's like did you sneak back here he's like yes he's like well no i i don't just give out jobs like that and the guy then posts his reaction he's like in tears what have i done so i, saw I think that, that yeah. the fire festival is kind of like a group of people who think that they they this will make some great content and great pictures and i've got to go and it sounds hype, but everyone that goes seems like that guy. Like, it's not like you seem to have many just regular old folks. It was all like these influencer types who were constantly instering each other. You know, it's like real, it's like that vibe going to an island run by big picture idiots with no details and no, no nothing. It was, it's unbelievable. It's the perfect storm of just everything that's wrong with, with that, that culture, I think. Yeah, oh, for, for sure. The, like, they were so clueless about the whole... Uh, and no one it, it was like no one was in charge no, no one was doing anything yeah. and no one and, and yeah and they had they just thought if they you know got all of these big influencers that they obviously love on you know what it I guess it was before tiktok you know yeah to come out for it that will somehow i don't know like make money like they like they <laughs> it's so it's, weird it's so weird but the, all the, the really... business side of it when he's trying to get money and it, it's bonkers honestly mate watch watch the document i would recommend it to anybody it is fascinating and it's it's also kind of cathartic because i don't like these kind of people you know what i mean i think a lot of people dislike them so watching them have a terrible holiday is kind of fun <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's, that's... Very I true. I have also been doing some research this week, and I think I think this might be very interesting to you two gentlemen. Oh yeah, what is oh. it? We have spoken okay. before about jugging, right? Oh, and um, we in fact we did some jugging merch, didn't we? The Triforce jug. Yeah, yeah, we did. And we did. Prison jugging, so which is when I, you throw boiling water or a cap of boiling I water. I feel like you're about to to say something I'm familiar with, but then also um, carry on. Just okay. carry on, because I, I have some things to what, add to this. Been, okay, has there okay. been a recent jugging event? No, 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 no. Yeah. This, this is a new chapter in my, and I would suggest, if I may, our interest in prison culture and prison life. Right, okay, okay. okay. So this new chapter Good. is one word for you, Pruno. Do you know what Pruno is? No. Pruno Ooh. or prison it... wine. Oh, oh yes. Is, I is wine it. that prisoners make. It's also called toilet wine because they <laughs> they, they make mm. it. I know. I know. Can I sell it on you some more? Are you interested? You'd yeah, love we some. Carry on. Yeah. So they get like a base of something like orange juice concentrate or right. something of that well, nature. It, it can just be anything, right? It could be yeah. literally like sugar powder or anything. like those. You just need like, the sugar. Like, yeah, like, it just, like just anything that has sugar, which, which is everything, right. of course. Especially because the in prison America. tuck shop is incredibly unhealthy. Of course. You know, it has all of the junk food, crisps and sweets and, you know, all that crap. So, yeah, you can make it out of chew or Indeed. anything that has a shy high so, sugar content. So, Wikipedia lists apples, oranges, fruit cocktail, fruit juices, hard candy, just sugar, okay. and high fructose syrup. And they put bread in because the yeast in the bread helps the pruno to ferment and they get it all right. in like a jug seal it up uh they put it on the radiator to get it going then they put it in the toilet cistern like the cistern on top of the toilet right. to, uh, okay. to to brew up and there's like a whole bunch of recipes out there it's like a big thing is prison Holy wine crap. and uh it's it's i just thought this was fascinating when i heard the words prison and wine i thought i love this so much i love the idea that these prisoners they've been locked up they're for, you know murder they're in there for 20 years. Oh, this is sucks. I'm, I can't get my hands on any wine. I think, <laughs> where? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. You're, you're new here. There's a special recipe that I'm going to teach you called Pruno. Now, it may give you botulism, which is apparently <laughs> quite a few botulism outbreaks. It sounds, um, pretty, it sounds pretty bad. It sounds bad. And it is made in a toilet. It is made in a toilet. It's also, <laughs> it's, it's not going to taste good. But it is prison wine, baby. God, in the quest oh, to have fuck. fun, sometimes you just have to, you know, a sprinkle of, of botulism here and there. It, it's going to happen, I, th I feel like. No? So, obviously, moonshine has been a thing as long as um, people have been a thing. I think people have been drinking alcohol since ever. Absolutely. Uh, so, the ancient Egyptians and, drank drank a lot of booze, didn't they? So I'm sure. And also, you know, every time it's been banned, there's been some illegal trade with people making, you know, high so high proof 
alcohol out of jam or whatever. You know, it's you, you see, there's even some in the old um, A Great Escape, isn't there? And stuff like this in these prison camps, you know, in, um, yeah. in the war. You know, they're always making their... There's always some guy, some dodgy guy with a still yeah. or whatever making... Making moonshine his, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, taking his potatoes and turning them into to wine or whatever. But yeah, I mean, it's always it's always part of it, right? And there's there's also wine, wine or like you know Buckfast is also the old classic bum wine. Right? Bum wine, which is also sounds even worse than toilet wine. But of course, what yeah. they mean is tramp wine. Like it's not actually from your bum, and nor do you ferment it there, nor store it there. They mean no. they mean or bum put, as well, your I suppose you person. could. You can actually take wine up your bum, which makes you, gets you very fucking Probably drunk. Probably would, by the way. yeah. Uh, so don't do that if you ever are considering that, it. That gives it, you, it could give you wine bum. It could give you alcohol poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um, these sort of inexpect that they because they was Buckfast was famously this monk made, uh, or at least uh, ostensibly monk made t- sort of tonic wine, right? And it became very popular in Scotland, particularly because it was so it was like the cheapest alcohol per. You're getting VFM right there, value for money, baby. That's exactly. it. Exactly, it's because of its high alcohol content, but cheap low price it was better than drinking i don't know what skull or whatever cheap lagers they were drinking or i mean i'm sure it's horrible but people are just willing to take that horribleness to get drunk you know because yeah. once you're drunk you don't care where it came from and you've usually forgotten what you drunk no as well, but once you know? you're drunk um equally i feel like uh you don't necessarily um want to die either like of um you know well, some 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 damages. The evidence know. would would point to the contrary. People when they're drunk do all kinds of stupid shit. People when they're drunk die. I think the most. Well, yeah. I feel <laughs> like yeah, I feel do. like nowadays more so. It feels like you don't even need to be drunk to do stupid shit. Like there's like a lot of stupid shit happening. Like right. Yeah, you just need someone filming you, and then that, you do yeah, stupid that's, shit. that's the yeah. main one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. But it, man, I mean, it lowers yeah. your inhibitions. It makes you feel indestructible. People want to fight more when they're drunk because they get aggressive and they think they can, you know, they can take on any anybody. And uh, alcohol is, it is, uh, it is my favorite drug, right. but it's also yeah. super terrible, really, for society at large. It's bad, but I mean, the the the, the, the being filmed is a different. It's, it's more of an automatic peer pressure, right? Like the camera pressure, because I think that does make people do dumb things, dangerous, things, especially more brave, like uh, jumping off stuff. It's it's similar though, because if you're drunk, people can egg you on to oh, jump in the canal, Dave. Dave He's going to jump in the canal, watch him. You know, and then poor old Dave yeah. fucking canals, belly flops it? into canals the canal. Again. Never seen Bigger push in the canal. <laughs> hey, everybody watch. Dave's going to jump in voluntarily <laughs> on his own free will. Yeah. He's, why why has he got goes. tape over his mouth? Why has he taped <laughs> why, his mouth up? Why, why, is, he, why are his hands bound? His hands are bound. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's jumping in of his own why volition. Why is he in a garbage <laughs> bag? Why have you got you that saw pole? It. Why is there a gangplank <laughs> here? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> You. Mm. Oh god! There's a bunch of other um, like fortified wines out there. Mad Dog, you've heard of that? Mad I Dog assume. 2020, which gives you 2020 yeah. vision. That's how. That's how it works. <laughs> what did you start with? <laughs> well, with in my case, I, I don't need my glasses as long as I've got it. A, a swift slug from my Mad Dog 2020. That's Mad Dog 2020, guaranteed to give you 2020 vision. Yeah, there's a bunch of them actually. Not, not a guarantee. I've got this one called uh, Sol. Solnisada, uh, which is named after a town on the Black Sea. It's a Soviet low-end fortified wine. See, now that sounds like a hell of a drink right there. Made from ingredients sourced from Algeria, of all places. <laughs> Just getting uh, better and better. It was, caused, it was the cause of many infamous severe cases of alcohol poisoning. Of um, and its production was cancelled after Mikhail Gorbachev uh, set some anti-alcohol laws up to stop some of the Russian drinking. Cock. That was how. I mean, Russians are famous. Yeah, they are for just cons- being drunk constantly. Like, imagine how bad it was before the laws. Oh, their this life is... expectancy is is shockingly low. Like, yeah, let me see if it's still you, bad. Because there's one of these things, isn't there, where you look at the amount of like the male-female ratio of a country. And obviously China has quite a high male to female ratio because of the one child policy. A lot of females' babies were killed um, because they were sort of they wanted a, a male to help them work on their, you know, often, in, you know, in some some areas they needed, a, well, you know, someone to work on their farms or take right. over their business or whatever. And they felt like they, I'm not saying, I don't know how much it happened, but it did happen. And in Russia, it's the other way around. Like, there's a lot less men than women because they die a lot younger they of, do. of alcohol. So poisoning. if you look at Russian life alcohol. expectancy, this is the chart that I'm looking at now on Wikipedia. In 1994, 
the life expectancy of Russian men was 50 Eight. Yeah, that that's, is that's, that is that's, that's unbelievable. Low. I think that's, that that's, that's the, so bad. That's the same as some of these sort of. That's the same as some of the lowest countries. I think there are <laughs> like um, the, the real bad ones. With, in Africa. It, it has improved now. In in 2014, it was 65. So uh, well done. They've added another another seven years. Oh, that's actually good. That's, that's actually yeah, good. Yeah, that's a it's, that's actually big change. Progress. Yeah, but yeah. That, that is progress. That's it has been getting better. If you look at the charts now, it's a, it's up to 72. But China's overtaken them, uh, and the US is is ahead of them again. But Russian women, their life expectancy has been 10 years or more greater than their male counterparts for pretty much the last 30 or 40 years. Even though they also had a dip in 1994. What happened in 1994? There was a big decline between 1986 and 1994 of, of uh, Russian life expectancy plummeted. Was that post Glasnost? Uh, all the shortages and everything's get going tits up, I guess, and then it gradually got better from there. That's interesting. In '94, was that when these set the fall of the Soviet Union? In '94, yeah. no, no, no. That, that's when the the like. If you think about it, it's not going to be like the fall of the Soviet Union decline in, in conditions where you're going to feel the effects immediately. You're going to have a few years after that where things are still in turmoil. I mean, yeah. the Berlin Wall fell in 1990, I think. Um, was yeah, it, it, must have, it must have been. 89 or 90? Something it it like must that. have been, yeah, late 80s, right? I think I thought it, was... it, I thought it might have been 1990. Let's have and then Glasnost was the whole opening up thing yeah. and becoming... Yeah, I mean, when 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 you go through a crisis, people don't starve to death instantly. So it was nineteen eighty nine um, was when they started. I always right. forget. So it was November 9th, nineteen eighty nine. So it was almost nineteen ninety. So but just things sort of limp along for a while. Yeah. So then you've got like a few key, years key where problems it declines exactly, and then it's like blam, everything's gone to shit. You know, you you basically everything's falling apart, and everybody I, I can imagine drinking was was uh, you know a way that people got got through this uh, this tumultuous time. Then it improved to ninety eight. Then it went Went back down again, and it's been a steady increase ever since. So, well done on turning that around, Russia. Wild Russian Vanya was a fortified fruit wine made uh, and sold in the American southeastern states, such as Georgia and Florida, during the early 1970s. It was referred to in commercials as Wild Russian Vanya. What a wine! <laughs> <laughs> uh, however, obviously, it was completely uh, U.S. produced. It, it was never even sold, but it was implied that it was imported from Russia. You That's see. so funny. Uh, I guess because of the reputation of these yeah. strong Russian wines. You know, I've, I've um, been uh, I've been brewing uh, at home myself for over the last few weeks. We got this thing. Uh, it's called a pint. That is such a dad I thing, know, isn't it? it Someone really to buy is. you that. Who bought you that? Mrs. Like, F. Mrs. Exactly. F. You can't post. It's. <laughs> it looks, she, it's she such was a like, dad present. I know. <laughs> I'm sure I bought my dad one one year. Do you know what I mean? I know. Uh, uh, it's like it's, it's, it's like only a, a matter of time. You're gonna get one soon, Sips. Yeah. It's fine. It's hell. like a little. Wait. It's like a little plastic barrel, and it's all you know. It's all really, really well made. And you open the top, which is fucking hard, by the way. And then you put water in. There's. It comes with this syrup. That's that's the sort of mix, if you like, for whatever you want to brew. Then you put in the yeast, seal it up. It's just give, give it's it a just shake. like being a pounder and yeah, ground up Jolly exactly. Rogers. Give it a bloody good mm. shake, and then you just. We actually store it in the the sort of understairs toilet area because it's a like out of the way cupboard yeah. so i'm thinking it is almost like prison wine because we do keep it in the toilet um and like lewis said i have no idea what's in this syrup it could just be mushed up polo mints and god knows what and then you put it in the fridge for a couple of days and then it's got a little tap on it and you just that's it you get like 10 pints of of beer or, or cider or whatever and it's it's really it's really good but um that's right. it's just i still don't yeah. quite understand why we're doing it be but Mrs. F is a big fan. Like it was honestly, I know it's a dad thing to do, but she was like, let's get this thing. Look, she saw it online. She's like, let's get her brewer and beer. I was like, okay. Man. And you can make like quite nice beer, like German style beer. And it's honestly, it sounds like she's actually she the sounds one like a, the, She it. sounds like the type of person who would buy a soda stream and uh, and would buy a soda stream because she was never allowed to buy like the, uh, <laughs> the slush puppy maker, like when she uh, was a kid, right? I, I think we, we did, she did, put it to me, should we get a soda stream? And I was like, no. Because <laughs> I remember yeah. my friend of, from Triforce, Passim, um, we, we mentioned before, Ben Richardson, who uh, of course is Anna Kendrick's uh, boyfriend or partner. Um, he had a soda stream and I would go around to Ben's house and it was very exciting to me that he had a soda stream. This would have been in the eighties when they were like a big thing and we would make soda stream and it was, it was thrilling and it was also incredibly tedious like it's definitely not as easy as just going no yeah. and opening a thing of coke and i don't even think it's it's not it's not any better it's like demonstrably worse than 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 coke 
But I think it's like half the price because your friend Ben Richardson, who's married to Anna Kendrick. It, well, I don't. They're not married, but I think they're definitely they're definitely going out. We spoke about this in a previous episode. Yeah, okay, I'm sure I don't we remember did, at all. Yeah. Sorry, my brain. Because I I only found out. I, I looked him up while we were talking about him, and I discovered. Oh, right, and I, I was like, friend. holy shit! I've been trying to get in touch with him for years. He never responds to my messages. I don't blame. Just him. tweet him. I have tweet tried. Him. He ask doesn't. Him, he doesn't respond. Oh. He doesn't yeah, he's know. he's too he's too um, he's too big. big. He's too big and famous now. He lives in LA. He's got a famous girlfriend. He's got a famous girlfriend. He's, just He's got like, no time whatever. for Whatever. Fair enough. So, but the, the classic story about I'll oh, brew in your own wine is my dad's um, beetroot wine. Do you remember I told you this story mm. as well? He, um, he basically decided one time when he was living in this little flat above these students that he would um, brew his own wine. He sort of lived on his own. And so he made all this beetroot wine following a recipe that he found somewhere. Right. And of course, he made like 12 bottles of it or however many bottles of it. I poured out a glass and found it absolutely disgusting. Um, and so what he did was he left them all out for the bin. Um, but then as he was as he, as he he was leaving, one of the students sort of accosted him and said, it was that wine you are throwing away. And he was like, yeah, I made it, but it's wine. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, all these students said, we'll have it. And they were they drank it all. They loved it. Oh, right. Well, wine he, could have, he, uh, he could have made a killing uh, selling it to students. Reasonably disgusting. He could have, he could have yeah. made some more. Just sold it. Well, I guess it is, but that is bum. That is the definition of bum wine, isn't it? You know, Eat root wine. You know, yeah, student wine. You know, cheap, cheap, cheap wine. Um, yeah, cheap, horrible wine that gets you wasted. God, and yeah. Probably. Makes you guys you remember ego, the first time you ever purple. tried beer? Like, um, like you know, like ale. Like when were you? Were you a kid? Like, did your dad let you try some? Yeah. Um, um, I think um, a lot of the time when you're a kid, you try other, uh, your parents' yeah, drinks yeah, and stuff, yeah. and you go and and, and I don't know. The like, first time mm. I ever tried it was so gross. Like I shuddered. Like it was just. I think I think everyone does. It's not. It is nice. very and very especially uh, anything. acquired, isn't it? Like uh, like I love yeah. it now, but I think your taste buds have to mature or something to get to the point where you can like it because it's just. It must be the bitterness it's thing with be, coffee yeah. and coffee free vegetables the same, as well I, I like coffee or the yeah. smell of coffee or anything when i was a kid but i love it now. yeah you're de it's weird, eh? definitely and i'm i've gone off like the sugary sweets i can't really eat like i can eat like one haribo like the egg and then i'm like oh <laughs> can't eat any more than that the uh, egg. but i remember for, even the done for the day <laughs> even the first time um <laughs> eating a haribo <laughs> egg i love those things <laughs> the first time i ever even drank with my friends when we were like in in high school we got somebody to buy us a case of beer like 24 beers and i there's probably like 24 of us uh sharing like this one <laughs> one case of beer but like none of us liked it but it, but it was you know you couldn't say that because you were drinking with your friends right and everybody had to be like the big experienced drinker or, or whatever um and i remember that people just would, would drink like finish like one or two beers and you'd be like hey do you want another one and they'd be like uh maybe after <laughs> like, it was just <laughs> it was just kind of like because we because we weren't acclimatized to the taste or anything yet right it was kind of gross so then i think the the first time we ever drank we did that and then uh the second time it was just liquor liquor mixed with like juice right because it's it's a, a, a lot easier to drink than than suffering through beer that you don't like the taste of or whatever it's pretty funny yeah i remember but liquor um, with juice gets time, you so fucking shit faced like it's unbelievable. i had some school disco and i wanted to sort of take some alcohol from my house to you know um, steal some basically from my parents sort of cupboard of alcohol and take it with me you know so i didn't have to buy it so i was obviously like i don't know 15 or 14 or 15 or something Maybe probably actually even younger than that and i remember i i poured the only thing that they had that was unopened sorry that was already open because i didn't want to open any of these bottles right because i thought that's a giveaway yeah the only thing that was uh opened and uh and, and had a reasonable amount in that i could you know cut de you know deceivingly steal some of was the martini um horrible that horrible sweet martini mix <laughs> um it's fucking disgusting. Oh man! Um, and so it was. It was. I poured out like a half a water bottle of that, topped it up with lemonade, and it was <laughs> so disgusting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like I don't know, but that, that was the stuff you did. I remember when you were kids. It was always like trying to do stuff that adults did. Oh yeah. Like, I remember very when I was obviously very young. Probably can't be more than like like nine or eight or nine or maybe ten. I was with some of my friends in the park. And they were smoking mm. tubes of paper, A4 paper, that they had uh, just 
taken from somewhere. Oh, like, so and that to, was, they were just just, they were, just empty tubes we, of paper. We were just oh, smoking yeah, empty that's tubes. Nice. That's nice. That's good, yeah. Just to mimic the old cool adults who hang out and smoke in the park. I don't know, like, kids do stupid stuff like that. They, like, they all do. the time. Yeah, kids they, are do. Stupid. they do. I think it's um, a shame. They, they want to grow up real fast, and then once they do... Yeah, they, they realize, uh, hang on a second, I'm, uh, I'm working nine to five, I'm busting my ass every day for a uh, man that I can't stand, and uh, sometimes it takes all I got to get through the day and you just think man to be a kid again eh? like yeah. no responsibility why did i wish it away blah 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 like it's it's easier times yeah yeah i was thinking about this as well i don't know like if you guys uh have this but i find like the older i get i look back more often on like dumb shit that i did right and i and i kind of like like cringe a little bit to think oh. like how stupid i was All like when time. i was when i was younger and i I never have I had never done that up until maybe like in the past, I don't know, 10 years or something. Right. Um, but the 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 total lack of self-awareness when you're a kid and a teenager or even in your 20s is 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 kind of staggering, really, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I just I like say, I look I back on things that I've said to people or things that I've done. Oh, I'm man, like, yeah. holy fuck. Like, what the hell was I thinking at the time? And how did yeah. I even get away with it? Like, I don't even understand. I just, it's crazy. Just thoughtless, aren't we? When yeah, I'm, yeah. When we're young. Some of the time, nuts. not everybody, but but I think certainly I, I was. Maybe I'm only speaking from experience, but I, well, I do no, think. No, I mean, I'm. I'm Things there my with friends you, did. Yeah. For sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, but I, I guess if you think about it, kids have no agency at all. Like no. my kids have to ask, can my friends come over? They ask. And I, I think, you know, Man, if they my, just said, my kids ask if they can go poo. Like, right, like, exactly. Yeah, of they course ask. you can. Like, what are you waiting for? Go. Like, it's so you don't even have to though. Ask. Well, can you? <laughs> uh, or may you? Right. Well, there you go. You no, can be well, that kind of dad. You can be that right dad. Yeah. Uh, nobody likes uh, that dad. Nobody yes. likes that dad. No. But th I guess it, it's kind of a testament to how much the freedom to do what you want to do, even if. The life is going to be harder, which it is as an adult compared to a kid. A lot of the time, it's much harder when you're an adult, but at least you're free to make your own decisions. And I think kids obviously have some innate desire, that human desire to be free and to be able to make your own decisions and, and stuff like that. So even though I, you can look back at being a kid, I also think I can't imagine being told when to go to bed. I can't imagine being told what's for dinner, no. where I can go. <clears throat> we're going here this year. Now we're going there. We're doing that. We're moving and not having any say in it whatsoever. I think it's not think worth the payoff like of low responsibility. Though, right? That these kids grow up into... The, Greg, the, this... The, they're still kids when they're working for these people, you know, these Instagram stars and stuff and all the people in their office. They're all young. They've all never had a proper job. They all don't know any like, how to do anything. They all just assume the world sort of ticks over and it will, ha and it will be work out all right. You know, they have this dreamy, uh, laissez-faire attitude to, to everything. And, and, and I think that, 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 that we are just big kids and we never lose that. And we all make stupid mistakes. There's an interesting TV show um, being made about the Clinton, Monica Lewinsky, scan right. right as if it's some sort of great event right when really it's just two horny people being stupid yeah it's not like there's nothing deep about it was pretty it. It's sensational some... at the time but yeah there's yeah. no there's not that much to it really it's just like yeah okay like he's just so clive just... owen is playing clinton and it's got old um, owen. That, yeah i know that doesn't it's make got any sarah sense paulson at all. sarah paulson's in it i'm not sure who she is actually in it but I assume she's um, like Monica Lewinsky. Who's gonna Hillary. play Monica Lewinsky? That one from uh, What if they got Monica Lewinsky to play the, Monica the lady Lewinsky? with the high voice from Dharma and Greg? Uh, or is it is it Dharma and Greg? I remember the, the I woman, know which the woman I know has, which show you she mean. She has a really Oddly high enough. voice. Yeah. I, I feel like she's got the the look the Lewinsky. That's look. Will and Grace, I think. Will and Grace, sorry, yeah, not Dharma and Greg. <laughs> but I, I knew exactly what you meant. The woman with the high voice from Dharma and Greg. I'm like, I, I speak dad brain. I understand what he means right now. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, you know, she's got a high voice. Like, uh, yeah, the one with the high voice from yeah, that Dharma and Greg yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, I know. Well, yeah. yeah. I, I tell you she, what, I, she she's a hell good, of a piece of ass. She's she'd a hell be of a good Lewinsky, I feel like. She'd be, she'd well, she's a... too old. She's too I old I guess now. she is now, yeah. Holy shit, by the way. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the, some context for this. I've been watching uh, uh, SAS, the celebrity SAS. Uh, right. Who dares yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. This year, this year is a... We're going to have to get you to jump out of a helicopter well, and climb across a mountain. Okay, a I don't want to spoil it for pack. you, but Ulrika Johnson is was in it this year, and uh, she, you know, like the the scene at the start GP of the show. Five five Y. 
Is she, is she a pussy? Is she not able to well, hack okay, it? Well, okay, I'm, I'm getting, getting to that, out, okay? Get down and give me 10, Ulrika. No, no. Get down and give me 10, so, you so they lazy come in, cow. So they, so they take them to the remote part of Scotland where the, where the compound is. They're coming in by boat, and the first thing that they all have to do is jump off the boat into the water, right? That's no, the first yeah, thing. Sure. And, and you can see Very them all, standard. like... They're kind of nervous about being there. Oh, I don't want, they don't know I don't what want to, to jump expect. off the boat into the water. It's all cold. Yeah, exactly. So they all jump off the boat into the water, and then they have to run up a hill to get to this compound, right? And uh, so Ulrika immediately gets hypothermia and can't run up the hill. So they have to take her off to, like, the hospital. She's, like, 53 years old, whatever. Like, I guess she's not in, like, amazing shape or, or whatever. So Yeah, I don't know how, how old you're allowed no, to no. be in the SAS. Well, I'm pretty sure know, they kick you out at about 45 it's, it's like and a, give you some desk job. It's a development sort of thing, right? It's like a character <laughs> sort of development. It's like a challenge it, for you, whatever. If there was a war on, I'm just saying, Ulrika Johnson not is not getting cool Ulrika, well, Okay, <laughs> no, I, I, Just because she's 53. They're not sending her to war, mean? obviously, and they're not even keeping her in the show because they, on the second episode they had to discharge her because uh, it was the uh, it was the challenge where you have to drop uh, off of the helicopter backwards and land in the water. They were pretty sure she would die doing Back it, in. so they were like, "Sorry, you have to leave the show." <laughs> and so she had to leave the show anyway. She's fifty three years old, but she looks like a little bit older. I don't want to judge too much or whatever. Uh, but the the context well, for it's this probably is because she hasn't had too much work done. Uh, maybe. That might maybe. Be it. But then um, I was looking on on Reddit and Cindy Crawford is like reshooting at the age of 55. She's reshooting all of these like famous um, things that she like did, like the Pepsi ad in like the late 80s or the 90s or whatever. And uh, man, she looks like better now than she did back. Then. It's it's unbelievable. Like I maybe they there's like some airbrushing or something on the on the pictures. But even then, and this is, I don't think she's had anything done. Like I I think uh, in actual fact, like her age in the 80s or the 90s said you should try to get rid of that um that birthmark like by your lip and she was like no no i'm not getting rid of that and and she never did so i wouldn't imagine that she's had anything else done like boobs or like you know cosmetic anything and she's she looks all, she's amazing all right, old i think she's always been like okay oh, but she's not, been, not she's, next to cindy fine. crawford is the point i'm trying to make here is uh it's oh. unbelievable she's two years older and it, it's just like uh, it's like night and day it's crazy let's and look she's, up cindy crawford i don't know i don't know she still looks i mean pretty pretty fucking hot she looks like she's 30 yeah you're right no, she, you're she right, definitely cindy. doesn't look like she's 30 but she, <laughs> she she looks great, great though it doesn't like <laughs> You know what I mean? She's lost. I she's lost a little bit of that softness. If you look at a younger Cindy Crawford, she yeah. Well, you will do. You softness. will do. Yeah, of but course. Like, I'm um, just saying. Like she's in, in, in. She's in. She's in pretty good shape, I think. Like, but then again, like tender I think, age of fifty-five. I think, I think when you're on SAS survival, you aren't allowed to have any of the makeup on, and that is a big thing. No, you know? but like, you know, I think like makeup can put they've 10 got all years their makeup on, on and you. everything in the in between bits when they're interviewing them and they're talking about stuff and everything so you you do see them in in makeup and stuff so you so you get the the contrast as well but i know it's just it was just interesting we just uh, we like talk a, a like, lot about tv in, on this show i see it's weird but we watch a lot of it did you hear i watch a lot of it. omar omar died yes. yeah. Michael yeah. williams poor guy yeah apparently he was so so, good someone said he was, on, he was only 54 himself yeah so but yeah. i think i think he'd struggled with uh with drugs and um, uh and and sarah harding as well passed away the uh from girls aloud she was only 39 she uh, died yeah, of terrible. breast cancer unbelievable yeah it's really sad. Oh, it's very sad. So super yeah. young. Jeez, you think thirty nine, yeah. man. It's, yeah, that's that's shocking. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of life left after thirty nine for sure. Um, that's that's too early to um to pass away. And uh, I've and then I read about um, as well. Jesus, I'll keep going with just TV news. I read about uh, Lord of the Rings Amazon thing is going to be just it's so big budget. Yeah. Um, and and also they they're doing the, the bloody wheel of time. Yes, I yeah. heard about that. Yeah, which is their Robert. I mean, the Robert Jordan wheel of time books are iconic, very very famous fantasy books. They're not as dark as Game of Thrones. They're a lot more like light fantasy or high fantasy. I think it's called right um, magic. A lot more I've read, magic I've, and stuff. I've, I've 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 been through. I went through them all about 10, 10, 15 years ago, and I enjoyed them. So yeah, I mean, I think. 
with new Lord of the Rings and new Wheel of Time, people are really leaning into this sort of fantasy. Yeah. And I'm really happy about it, honestly, well, because... there's also uh, you know, Foundation is coming out on Apple TV. Um, really? As as Isaac Asimov's If you look at the trailer, Foundation. it looks super hype. I mean, it's proper sci-fi, you know, it's like real... So I've, got, I've actually got that on my bedside table because I've read it. I remember Foundation was one of the first sci-fi books I read as a kid, and it really sent me down a path of reading a lot of sci-fi and really getting into sci-fi well, when I was, when I was there's young. There's some big and series coming, baby. I don't big remember Big series it. coming. And nice. June, the movie, yeah. coming out hopefully, what is it, October or something? It's or November it's coming out. So yeah, so it's um, a, a new a new age. Hopefully, hopefully we're gonna have more. Uh, I'm I I've I've loved the superhero movies. I loved all the Marvel, the MCU stuff. I've really been enjoying the What If series that they've been doing. Well, on, well, um, the new Marvel movie Disney. is out. It's it's called Shang Shang Chi and the Ten Rings um, or Twelve Rings or something. It looks okay. Yeah, apparently it's it's apparently good. It's good the, yeah. Appa- interestingly, the guy who's in ch- the star is called Simu Liu. I don't know how to pronounce his name. But he used to be, before he was in movies, he used to be a stock photography model. Right. And so there's loads of pictures of him. Oh, yeah, in like, like in like corporate <laughs> like settings and stuff. I saw, I saw oh, something. Hilarious. And he's been, he's been using those to like... Um, like, he, like he tweeted out one of them with him like with two guys pointing at a screen and he was like me laughing at the people who thought we'd flop he's kind of been memeing himself that's with his awesome. old stock photography that is so models, awesome that's like a is... ready made meme right there that he can just use to I know because if, if a film if like if you have a lot of memes on the internet that are popular that's like the best ad- advertisement really for your film I think it's like such amazing word of mouth that's, a, <laughs> that's incredible he's that is really good he's on the front cover of a book called using QuickBooks Accountant for Accounting <laughs> 2050. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ironically, that's great. I love that. Hey, you Sorry. think about it. Most of them have done like an advert. Most actors have done an advert or two in their early days. But to have uh, to have been a stock photography model, that dude is everywhere. Like he I love is that. everywhere. That you could just buy shutter stock stuff of him <laughs> to use as well. That's I mean, funny. that's basically the, what we talked about with um, you know having your face deep faked onto stuff right like like he's already spent years getting pictures of himself from every angle taken and yeah. now he goes into acting he's just like look use this back catalogue i made already just Perfect. i'm not gonna act again you know just put me put get someone else in and use my face i love that before we carry on this week's episode is sponsored by express vpn mm. you can use express vpn for all sorts of things to protect yourself online but one thing particularly i would say is that watching netflix without using express vpn it's a little bit like paying for a gym membership but then only being able to use the treadmill you can change your online location very easily to control where you want netflix to think you're located and since they have almost a hundred different server locations you can gain access to thousands of different things you haven't watched this of course works with all the other streaming services and i do take advantage of that to change my location and get around things like blocks like if it says on youtube this thing isn't available in your country i'm like well fuck you yeah i've heard him say it as well it uh, echoes across the heavens he's so angry about it when it happens so, yeah fuck you i fuck like you. express vpn uh, i've never had any issues with speed or buffering i honestly can't notice you can use it on your phone your media console your smart tv it's it's got apps for everything it works encrypts your data as well so you can browse the web securely if you're not using express vpn why not give it a go it's very useful to have um i make use of it and it and it definitely pays for itself so stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of the content yeah get yeah. your money's worth you can get access to hot sri lankan tv shows like salsapuna bawathra and mahathala hatana i love mahathala oh, really? Uh, ExpressVPN. Yeah, catch up on the latest episodes of Salsa Puna. Why not? (laughs) ExpressVPN.com slash Triforce. You get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's ExpressVPN.com slash Triforce. We love you. Back on with the show. Thank you very much. Oh, my gosh. Well, there's there's loads of interesting stuff in gaming as well, by the way. So, um, you know, Player Unknown Mm. left... PUBG. I didn't know uh, this. To work on his his new game. I thought PUBG was his game. Well, no, it was, it was, it's, 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 it's sort of a Korean company. Is it called Kratos or Krand, Krand, Krandos or something? Oh, who, yeah. Who okay. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who runs it. I thought, oh, okay, sure. Um, so, yeah, he left and he's made a new a new game and he's going to make, he's released a little teaser for it. It's called Prologue. Right. For like uh, this 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 game he wants to make called Artemis. And Why I doesn't think he Pum- call it Player think- Unknown's Prologue? Or, or he will do. He will do, I'm sure. But it, so he's made apparently. He could be like the, the next Sid Meier. I read that he said, 
He said, How dare um, you make I was, that comparison? I was, playing pub, I was playing PUBG and I went to the end and I hit an invisible wall and I thought, why couldn't this be bigger? And I was like, well, that's not really the point, is it, of PUBG? <laughs> but anyway, he basically has made this 64 kilometer wide open world and his game design idea is to f- slowly fill it with dynamic or randomly generated events. A little bit like, I guess, how Elite Dangerous and these sort of games work where they have this massive mega universe and it's all procedural, right? Like gaming these days, I was thinking about this, talking about this a lot because um, I went to a wedding the weekend. I'll tell you about that later. Um, but <laughs> but um, I, I I think that these days games that are being developed, I'm seeing it more and more, aren't bothering with like a single player campaign. Instead, they're spending their efforts making this sort of procedural kind of roguelite, it's called or whatever that's called, thing where you sort of make progress as far as you can. And then you die, and then you start a game, but you get upgrades every time. Like we're seeing that so yeah, often yeah, yeah. now as an alternative to the classic. Because I don't think people are super into the stories. Like I, I was playing uh, Pathfinder: Wrath of the Righteous uh, this week, which came out, and um, man, I thought it's really, really fun. It's a proper single player D and D style. We have a little party of people, and some of them can leave or die, and decisions and stuff. And you you make your party and your team, and you you fight your way through dungeons and stuff. And I was really, really enjoying it. Um, and then I actually died by accident because I misclicked into a room with an enemy that is apparently like really hard. Right. Mm. <laughs> and then I I just died, and then I it didn't auto save. Um, f- for at all basically for the last hour and a half of my gameplay and i was just like oh my god um anyway sorry that happened but yeah i think generally games now are about building systems um like if you've you played a bit of no man's sky this week yeah, i have you? been yeah, it's, yeah i saw you streaming it's it. been fun man it's actually which really is fun good, yeah it's and it's entirely dynamically generated, right? Which means it's so fresh. Well, they've and added, it, they, weird. They've, they've improved it a lot, and they've added a bunch of new stuff to it. And the the stuff I'm more most interested in is um, you can you can create settlements and you can manage them. You can yes. you can hire aliens to come in and do stuff. Oh, really? That's amazing. Everything. Yeah, yeah. That's which new. seems really cool. So I've just gotten. I like, really liked. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of automation stuff that you can do now as well. Like you can set up uh, like. Um, atmosphere mines. extractors like uh, mines and stuff like that but you so you can have multiple bases across different systems it's really, all connected with so teleporters and stuff like it's it's yeah. been pretty cool so can, they've definitely so you, i love me that into i love flying around finding plants looking at plants being like oh these are all terrible going to a new place warping along scanning all the planets and being like oh this has got some gold on it perfect i land on it kill a few animals or whatever yeah, yeah. You know, set up set up a so base i got, got cool. a question because i was watching i was watching sips play it for about 10 minutes um and it looked like a lot of blasting rocks with a laser picking up stuff blasting rocks with laser picking stuff up yeah is there is there like any peril like do you need to build defenses or is it just um, no not not immediate it's more just like a um it's it's meant to be sort of like a gentle sort of exploration um you know collect collect them all kind of thing like there is some there's sentinels and certain things that if you pick them up they'll alert sentinels in to to fight you and you can you, yeah, you can the, fight against them the worlds them. are often very hostile as well yeah. like like they're either too cold or too hot you can't necessarily yeah. you've you got to be careful there's some there's some nasty um flora and fauna out there that can fuck you up if you're not keeping your eye and, on it and if you so, die yeah. Is that the end of the game? Like what no, happens? you can play on permadeath if you want to. There's an option, uh, but just in the normal mode, when you die, um, you just um, you just spawn back with no inventory where you last right. saved. Uh, but which but, is a bit of a fuck. But you can go actually. and find your body, yeah. uh, which I, I died yesterday, and uh, which is very standard in a game. Yeah, you can't yeah. really. Yeah, I was just I mean, curious. it's I easy just to get all your shit back. In, in a sense, the game does. There are quite a few ways to die, and you have to be careful not to do it. But I think that. It's one of these games where if you just take to, it's it's not it's not like you're not supposed to pay attention. Uh, I think if you were playing it where you had to pay attention to it all the time, it would be a very stressful game. And the game does kill you quite quickly sometimes. Mm. Um, you're like, oh fuck, I'm gonna yeah, die. Like yesterday, and then you I die picked up an and, egg, and then like a million bad guys spawned in and just absolutely killed me. Which is which is fun though because you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Right? It, it's uh, it's nice. Oh, that you another can thing get you can do is you can oftentimes you'll die because you're surprised. You can have yeah, a fleet as well, so you can buy like a huge uh, freighter, and they're massive. 
expensive and you can have like man uh, I, I never could afford you can get any of that. i played the game ships. for like 30 or 40 hours and i had like the starting yeah, ship yeah. I no there's so much to do in it now it's crazy um i've tried playing it in the past and never it's never really hooked me in in any way but this this time i'm 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 definitely into it it's good they're doing there's a big campaign this week where there's going to be drops and stuff as well which is kind of exciting i guess if people if you play it, I mean, by the time you hear this, it'll mm. be over. It'll be last week. It'll be over. Yeah, it seems it seems pretty good. It's, it's mm. been fun. I noticed uh, the XCOM guys are making a Marvel superhero game. Oh wow! Okay. Um, called Midnight Suns. Yeah. And it's got like you have to make your own hero, but it's got like this sort of card battling system in, and it's very weird. It looks weird, but just give us XCOM um, three for fuck's sake. Like, yeah, I don't care yeah. What else you're working on? Give it's got to be. XCOM it's got to be like three. a better version of Terrors from the from the deep, right? Because that was the big thing at the end of XCOM two. That there was like, oh, you know, don't don't do an underwater. Come on, let's just that would like just have do it an like, underwater, uh, but just do it good. Like uh, if it, if it's underwater, but it's as good as XCOM two, I'll play it. Like uh, XCOM two is it's, fucking awesome. It's such a limited setting, man. Underwater, or like, have, maybe on. some of it can be underwater. I don't. No, flax cheese. I'm not. Um, I'm not. The, well, I'm I want just better. Saying that. All right. I want better. I don't want underwater. Man, you're making me want to play fucking Get Terror from the Deep right now. I really enjoyed that vibe. Ugh. I think some some people got a good kick out. Of How it. are you going to so, throw some... a grenade underwater? It's all going to be no, torpedoes. Yes, and harpoons. Didn't you ever play Terror from the yeah, Deep? Yeah, and it was wank because it was underwater. Oh, it was good. It was good. I enjoyed bits of it and hated other bits of it. But I don't know. There's. It was. It was. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like sometimes I think Terror from the Deep. It was made in 1994 five by one guy yeah, it was not, a sequel uh, to his like, I don't think it was received super well but. yeah I, 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 there was no patches because that's how games were made back but in it the feels day, like the mean? story uh, from XCOM 2 is heading that way right like, No Man's Sky was made what seven eight years ago and fucking has been patched to death ever since like continuously and now it's a good game but like I did see this week that No Man's Sky finally uh, went from overall mixed to overall mostly positive, like on Steam. Yeah, like I know. It's a, it had a really interesting the uh, redemption arc. For the first time. Because apparently, like, the amount of negative reviews back in the day really just held it, yeah. like, really kept There's it There's been down. a couple of games, like, <laughs> I was talking to uh, Chad about this the other day when I was streaming, and uh, No Man's Sky is definitely um, sort of perceived as one of those games that came out it didn't live up to expectations and people were angry about it, but oh, now man, yeah. it's in a much better space and people actually think it's a pretty good game. Um, Diablo 3 was the same. Diablo 3 is pretty disappointing when it came out, but then Reaper Souls kind of fixed a lot of it and it and it became better or at least uh, widely regarded as like a pretty good game, even though it's 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 old now and people don't play it as much or whatever, but it's it, it definitely went from being bad to to good. Uh, Final Fantasy fourteen that which I play as well um, started the same. It was it, it was destined to be some flop, and um, they had to basically redo the the sort of base game which they did. Um, and now it's it's it, it's very popular. I think I think I think um, there's a PC gamer article. I mean, take from that what you will if you like PC gamer, but they ranked it as like the the most popular MMO even above above wow now because i think wow has had the big exodus of players because of the state of the game yeah a lot of people have has. gone over to play games like and maybe Fantasy the and other uh, stuff. the blizzard stuff as well that like, too um, yeah i mean you, yeah you yeah you have to take that into account as well yeah it's just interesting sometimes these games they come out and you you can almost write them off and say oh well you tried your best but this game sucks and nobody's ever going to play it but then... these these redemption stories are so interesting yeah because i'm sure a lot of people give up you know pull the plug they're like okay i'm, I'm wearing a suit i this game's not gonna happen we're not gonna resolve it we're never gonna have a redemption story we're just gonna pull the plug and, and abandon it you know i think that does happen it's often but i think that's that's standard practice you certainly used to be that you know games you know especially on console when they they were putting them on discs there was no way to give it a day one DLC, day one patch or any of this you know once you yeah you did the game and that yeah. was it mm. you were stuck mm. you, it was it was like an article you pu published it you sent it off you posted it and it was gone yeah they um, did um but they did used to bring out patches on cover discs for magazines uh once once the pc market was uh established you could there were patches yeah um, that would come out i think people kind of forgot that and there were also whenever you'd buy there were also a lot of utilities on the front of those uh, on those discs especially if you got there were other magazines i think there was one that was just a pc magazine it wasn't for gaming it was for people that were like programmers and shit yeah, yeah. And there were lots of utilities and free programs and, and trial versions of things but they did used to release patches 
for PC games on cover discs. That was the only way to get them. Most people don't have the fucking internet, so you had to get them on the, in a, from a magazine. But uh, they, it certainly wasn't the way it is now, where you get like roadmaps that you can read and interactivity with the devs. I mean, U-Boat, which is a game that I play uh, from time to time, I'll play it for a, a, like a week solidly. They're always patching that game. Like, here's a whole new patch, just like, blam, and it's like a ridiculous amount of content. That never would have happened. Yeah. Um, and I know that I, whenever I'm playing an early access game, or we're talking about an early access game, people in chat always complain, fucking early access, wank, whoa. I think, you know, you don't have to buy it. Like, you, you don't, wait. No. Like, I, Baldur's Gate 3 has come out, but it's early access Baldur's Gate 3, right? So I'm not playing it. I'm going to wait. And there's another game, I think it's called Death Trash or something like that, which looks really good. And my friend played it and uh, it was Munt who played it and he was like, it's great, but it's not finished yet. I was like, cool, well, then I'll, I'll wait. Yeah. I don't see why people can't just wait. I feel like what they're angry about is that it's there and they want it and it's available, but it's not ready yet, but they want to have it anyway. And then they complain. Uh, and I think they also feel that developers are putting these games out before they're finished and then finishing them after people have bought them. And you've bought this game and you have to wait six months for it to be right. Yeah. Believe me, as a football manager, you know, buyer of pretty much every football manager game has ever been, I feel you because if the game comes out in October or whatever, and it's not until March or April when the third big patch comes along that it's actually any fucking good. I'm with you. I understand. It's frustrating. But I also think that we want so much more in our games now compared to what we wanted 20, 30 years ago when we were playing PC games and Amiga games or whatever. It needs to be so much more that it's much harder to develop those big games without any money coming in for potentially several years at a time. Yeah. That's how it feels. <laughs> You're not wrong. Um, it's, it's, it's a weird... But the, then again, every time you post an update, right, you create this bump in sales and news and chat about the game, which they can see on their graph. Do you know what I mean? So so very these games who these these guys it's very easy for you to develop a game and think well you know let's make this game release here then we'll have update one after two months right. and update two after four months do you know what i mean and we'll put this in this update and this in update and we'll get it all done before we release it so we don't have to rush around and panic you know a lot i think a lot of people promise things too right they're like oh we will add yeah. this thing when you guys do this or you know follow us on twitter and we'll release this thing and i mean pe and people then like they don't uh, get it in ton in time like people say i love this development team they listen to the player base and they make the changes and all the rest of it so people love that experience but the if the community comes together and says you guys should add this this is really important if you like there's a, a groundswell of support saying yes that's right you should add this feature and they're like okay cool and they add it and i think people love that because they're helping to shape the game in a way that the players actually want it to be shaped because that can be a hard thing sometimes for a game developer to to gauge is you know they've got a vision of the game but everybody plays it and they're all asking for some quality of life you know or whatever and these changes happen so people want that relationship with the developer but they also just want like a finished game at release that's that doesn't have uh you know a roadmap and isn't early access so i think it's i think people there's a combination of people we don't none of us know what we want that's the problem yeah we don't really know what we want it comes out and we're like yeah it's okay but me and it needs a few changes i think the standards for for games and games as a service and stuff like that is so high now too that i don't even think a developer making a game uh, can be a hundred percent sure what people want yeah it's, you it's need so complicated a games now when a game is released like it's i feel like it's very rare now that a game is released and it's just like yeah we're not we're not touching this one anymore it's just done right. unless yeah. it's like a platformer or something right, like right. that maybe but like there's always got to be scope to add more stuff to the game. I think I think now. people are jostling now. And the other thing is these games often have to keep going. Like when I talk to game devs, they're always like, you know, I want to keep people playing my game. And I'm like, well, you've got a three hour story game. People are going to, you know, play that game for three hours and they're never going to play it again. Like, how do you bring people back to that? Do you know what I mean? It's like, why, why are you looking for concurrent daily users yeah, on this game? I mean, like, that's not some, your kind A couple of game, games right? that have done that very well, where it's like, yeah, you play it and you don't necessarily need to go back to it is that uh, Oberdin was amazing but you play oh, it yeah. once you wouldn't really play it again you no, might yeah you're done right but like yeah you know it's it's a uh, it's a very contained experience that's a great example of a game that we everyone who plays it tells people yeah. to play it though you know i think there's i think that you do get those but i think these days we are in this world of free games right where there's a free game on Epic every day. Most of the big games that we play are free. Mobile games are certainly everything's free. And then a lot of people subscribe to things like Game Pass, which gives them a lot of games for inverted commas yeah. free. Do you know what I 
know what I mean? Right, right. They pay a subscription, but it feels like the they're value all free. from so Game Pass. What you is have is you have nuts. Actually, it's, I know it's very good. Um, uh, not that we're shilling it or anything. I don't know how they make money it. from. It. Well, they, the thing is, it's like any subscription service. You know, people don't actually use it that much, or they 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 don't make the full use of it. But also. All these games in Game Pass are jostling for your attention, you yeah. know, and, and you have to stand out, and you do that by continually posting updates and bumping yourself to the top of the news I will news say feed. this. I will say this. When it comes Go to on. early access, I, 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 I kind of understand why people have a problem with early access. What I have a problem with, I think a lot of people have a problem with, is when a game is released, they, they state that it's finished, but it's clearly not. Cyberpunk being a prime example of that. That If that had been an early access version of the game, people still would have said, whew, got a long way to go. But this was like this big hyped game that came out. Yeah. And then it felt like it was like pre-alpha. There was so much wrong with it. So I, I, I think people have a... I have much bigger problem with AAA they titles early, the, that the early access 60 set them quid. up for a fall. Yeah, but I have a big problem with that. If something costs that much and it's fucking we awful... Played, um, do you remember we played um well it's that bloody zombie game where you you build the, the forts and you defend Daisy? the, the uh, shit no, seven I days I was, to die I was looking at it the other day seven days to right. die thank you Sips. we played that game you know back 10 years ago and it's still in alpha uh, after 10 years on early access do you know what I mean yeah. they, it sold 10 million copies do you know what I mean it's it's done fantastic um and it's it's still you know they're still they're very shy to call it anywhere near done um, which is a, a very obviously, you know, uh, they obviously feel not like, like it's not ready, like it's not polished. Like they they they're scared to say this is our game. You know, I think other people are feel like they have to push out a completed game, especially when you've got something like Cyberpunk launching on all the different platforms. You can't launch early access on a and have a disc sold in you know game right. or you know it's 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 definitely like um a different tone isn't it but we have been set up with this idea that everyone knows what early access is yeah. you know you're going into an, a, a world where you know we we are surrounded by incomplete other games that we can compare your game to so yeah it's really interesting really really interesting uh, the other, I've been doing loads of things. I've been looking at 3D printing this week. I really want to get a 3D printer. Man, are you having like a midlife um, crisis or something? What's going on here? Like 3D. Print? I want to get a 3D. Pr- I want to get a 3D printer. I want to do everything some some other time. I went to a wedding uh, the weekend. It was really nice. Although, how do you have time to do all this stuff? So so there was a wedding happening at a nearby place. Okay, and it it had a name. I'm not gonna say the name just in case you look it up and stuff. Well, right. maybe you can. It's it's called the Cider Orchard. Okay, it's like a wedding venue. It's a nice little venue about half an hour's drive out of Bristol. And on the invitation, I'd looked at it and I was like, oh, yeah, it's near Western Straw. Cool. I'll, I'll, you know, it's going to be easy to get to, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) So me and my partner were were going to this to this wedding and she said to me oh you know call, call the uber and i said okay do you have the postcode and she's like yeah here's the postcode so i typed it in and we got in the uber and we drove about half an hour in the wrong direction and i was like i'm sure it was i'm sure it was in western not not this way and she was like no no you know and then like you know sort of 15 minutes later she i was like you should I'm, I'll, I'll just check on my phone so i looked at my phone and of course She'd like typed in the cider orchard and it was taking us to a different cider orchard. Right. But she'd got the postcode from the wrong cider orchard that she typed in to her phone and sent us like <laughs> completely the wrong way. <laughs> so then we had to like change the thing in the Uber. And then it obviously we'd gone half an hour in the wrong direction. So it was then an hour's drive. And then we got stuck in traffic. So we arrived at this wedding just as the, the wedding, just as they're, they're finishing. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like we snuck in to the back just as the ring's going on the finger. Oh, oh no. It was, it was like, oh. It was like only me, only I can can be the person that that happens to. It's a small world because there were loads of game devs there. Someone actually had uh, been in the flipping jingle, uh, not, uh, Tiny Teams Festival that we did and was like, oh, Lewis, I'm sure you stream my game and i was like oh my god nice well, <laughs> so i had had some nice chats with some some game devs and um had a nice uh, 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 sort of uh, they had some vegan stuff but no no sauce or no no gravy or anything it was just very it's like potatoes just dry potatoes dry beans and like dry bur- like vegan patty burgers. So you scum like, mm. deserve. That's what they were thinking. I was, I was, but Let there the was no sauce or anything bread. for anyone. <laughs> there, was, there was no sauce. It was very dry. 
a very dry that's, that's rough. <laughs> wedding meal. Uh, that, I, but you know I, what? This I, is funny. I had this conversation with my dad last night. I don't want to go into too many details because it was infuriating. But one word: ivermectin. Uh, oh no! Came out. Oh, no but, really? Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah like, man. How does he? Where does they get? Uh, where do they get this from? Dude, I, I, who is? Who is this? What is he? What platform is he I using? I don't, this even, want to, I don't this even want to get into it. Madness. It, it really, really, it's really upsettingly annoying. Actually, how, <laughs> how angry I got, but um, it, it was one of those things. <laughs> anyway, we were we were talking about um, we were talking about <laughs> I know. Ve- vegetarians. He, he obviously he hates vegans. I don't actually hate vegans, right? I eat vegan food all the time. Obviously, Lewis, you're one of my dear I'm friends. Plant based. Plant based is the new way exactly. to say it. Exactly, it is definitely plant based. Yeah, whatever. Sounds I, have, I, have, I, I joke. You know what I mean? I'm not. I don't actually. Hey, yeah, vegas, I, I, of course funny. I know, absolutely. Yeah, but the I fucking think a lot of listeners, find Lewis, they got their brains in their I fucking joke about stashed, it all the time. Stashed up their ass with their prison wine. They don't know. They think I actually hate vegans. I don't. So my dad makes this point. Why do they have to try to trick us? And I said, what do you mean? And he's angry that vegans pretend that it's a burger when it's actually a giant mushroom or whatever. They call it like vegan chicken. And it's like, what is that? Shithouse mushroom or whatever it's called. All that kind of stuff. And I was right. like, I don't think Shitake. they're, I don't, yeah, I don't think they're yeah. pretending or trying to trick <laughs> Why do they try to it's, trick us? They're not trying to trick you. It's just that you can do a lot more with food if you look at the recipes we already use for meat and just swap the meat out. Like, there's already thousands, hundreds of thousands of recipes that involve meat. He was like, vegetables are beautiful. What's wrong with just a bowl of vegetables? And I was like, think how boring that would get. And that's the way they treat vegans and vegetarians, plant-based eaters quite often, Lewis. Like at your wedding. Oh, vegetarians. Yeah, just a bowl with some fucking vegetables in. It's like, well, come on. We we make the vegan, the weird, ve- I'm not a fan of the vegan chicken and the vegan bacon and all the, ve- the fake. I, I hate all that stuff, actually. I think it's that's the worst part of being a vegan. But, you know, and maybe I'm on your dad's side. But I think it's designed to cross over to him and give him an alternative I, I don't to even cholesterol think that's it. and a heart attack. If I, right, let's imagine I was going to make... I mean, you know, everybody loves chicken and chips. It's a classic. Chicken and chips goes together brilliantly. Sure. Put some cheese on the chips, bit of sauce on the chicken, bingo. What if... No, yeah, no, I don't want it dry. Right, like, what if we just, you no, know, not, took all the meat additions. out of this and, and did the same dish? Because we know it's it works. We know it's delicious. I don't think it's yeah, a fucking undercover, cover it undercover meal that's like, dun, 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 trying to sneak into the house of, of a carnivore <laughs> and get them to eat them. <laughs> oh, I ate the vegetables. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's just easier if you use existing recipes, but swap out that one thing, animal products, and find substitutions. I think that's all it is. It's not a trick. Is is he angry that that his his wife is swapping in the the vegan stuff for the meat stuff and trying to trying to trick him that Miss way? F- is Mrs. F does that all the time. She will, she'll cook dinner and I'll eat it. She's like, did you enjoy Most that? Most men, I'll be like, yeah. if they have something put in front of them... I'll eat it. Will, uh, well, exactly. And, you know, you, I won't even be able to tell right? often what's I, even I in... Tell. So she was like, oh, did you enjoy so, that sausage roll? I was like, oh, it's fantastic. She goes, it was vegan. I was like, okay, cool. It was a haggis. <laughs> Man, I, I had some vegan sausage rolls last week, and they were really good. I, I yeah, liked them great. a lot, actually. I don't have a problem with I it. I felt like I was tricked at the time, obviously, <laughs> but I felt like somebody was trying to trick me. Like some Why are they sort trying of, to trick me? Some sort of magician or whatever. <laughs> yeah, this is another thing that always gets me with these guys. They're always like, oh, they're, they're trying to trick me like some sort of magician or whatever. And they're always Christian. I, fucking Jesus was a magician, wasn't he? Like, didn't he, he just? Was so he was one of the greatest magicians of do all time. Magic healing yeah. on people and shit. Like, what's what's this like uh, anti magic movement that's that's developing? <laughs> like, come on! I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Did you know? Yeah. Regarding, sorry, I know this is going on a bit, but regarding tricking, there's been a thing this week where Keanu Reeves has been well, not actual Keanu Reeves, but lots of people have been scammed by someone called some Keanu Reeves, like catfishing them. Oh wow! Uh, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of there's a bunch of scammers pretending to be Keanu Reeves, tricking sort of elderly Older women. women are being targeted by scammers pretending to be Keanu Reeves. What? Yeah, so... <laughs> but they're falling for it, and they're properly, like, you know, selling their houses to move to LA oh, to be with him and stuff. Oh, come on. Really? Yeah, I'm not sure why... I mean, he's he's a multi-millionaire. I don't know why he would need cash from your auntie or whatever. So this scammer but... pretended to be Keanu Reeves, tricked women into thinking they were in a relationship with him. They sent a necklace and earrings to this aunt. This is the, the, the article I'm reading. And they also asked for 10 grand. This is from an actor whose supposed net worth is supposed to be $360 million. So he said, could you send me $10,000? And they sent the money oh to fake Keanu God. Reeves. 
I mean, I understand. How do you feel at you the moment be- you're doing this? Like, in your mind, are you like, I have actually been talking to Keanu Reeves. Like, I, I can't believe it. He's like this big, big megastar. Like, you you would have to I at just, one point think, hang on a second. Like, Eventually, the fake Reeves asked if they could meet at a celebrity event. But the catch was she would have to stump up two grand to attend and send him the payment in Bitcoin. And <laughs> that's the actual scam. I just, I like, I respect that. I like it, my aunt yeah, buying Bitcoin. Of course. I, it's sad. That's cool. But, but people do get scammed into relationships. It, it's horrible. But I, I could at least understand if she'd been scammed by, say, some younger guy and she was, you know, sort of wooed and swept off, swept off her feet and all that. But to actually believe you were dating Keanu Reeves online and he needed 10 grand and some Bitcoin, come on. You know, co- come on. That that's Hey, I'm come on. I'm busy making the new Matrix 4 movie, but I I I've run out of Bitcoin. <laughs> yes, uh, Bitcoin. And I really want to meet you so bad. Ten grand. How old are you again? Sixty-five <laughs> years old? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that's just what I like. Come on, baby. See you in California. Like it's come on. That's crazy. That's Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> I am Keanu Reeves. Just like you see in the movies. In Predator. I know. Well, yeah. sorry, the, Send me $10,000 okay, in the Bitcoin imperson- right now. The impersonation <laughs> wasn't great, I admit. Sorry, but No, I didn't know I didn't know how to do an impression of him either. Um but yeah, I just love that I love the idea that in between shots of him like doing the the Matrix four or whatever, he's like on his phone. <laughs> Like chatting up grandmas. Holy crap. Hi, grandma. Hi, grandma. Show me that sag ass. I love it. Yeah. Oh, Send me some Bitcoin. Send me the Bitcoin. Oh, Come on, do it. Come on. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, the world is insane. I love it. The world yeah, is insane. Mad, mad. If you have kids, don't let your kids become these people. Just do whatever you can. Come on, like no, this can't work in the future. Shelter them. Home, home it's bad them. enough that it's happening right now in 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 our timeline. Don't don't let this timeline continue. <laughs> don't let yeah. your sons and daughters be tricked by fake Keanu Reeves in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you owe it to yourselves. Do it. Come on, you can do wow. it. Oh my God, that's crazy. I love that. Anyway, that's, uh, that's thank you for listening to Travels Podcast, everyone. We'll see you next week. And until then, bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 bye.